In your packet, you'll find some different things. We've got some new tests that are samples that we're going to try and come out with um, by November for the national meeting which means that they'll be ready the first of the year. So we'll have a level one. We'll have four tests at level one, four tests at level two. We're going to have um, some freestyle. So we've got that set up. So we're going to make it a lot more exciting this year than it's been in the past. I know some of the folks have been complaining that we want, that they want better tests or a little more exciting tests, but we're going to give them to you. And so we patterned these tests to kind of have fun with. Also in the packet is a little write-up for um, Western Dressage of America, and I think a, a blank in there that you can become a member. And then I also have in there a set of patterns, and that's what we're going to get started with. Those patterns are kind of a guide. The circles that you see on there are set on 20-meter circles, and then the smaller circles are 10-meter circles. And so we're going to start tonight by learning just some basics, and I only have an hour, so I'm going to rush through this as quick as I can and give you a lot of information. Um, there's a, there's a uh, page in there for the, for the lower level skill sets. We have three skill sets, which are training aids, and those, that's the first skill set that you have in that packet. You can come and see us later, and we'll try and get you some more if you're past those. Um, so what we're going to start with is the basic aids. You have basically four aids that you're going to work with as your basic beginning aids. You have an inside rein. In this case, it's my right hand. The inside of the circle. You have an outside rein. My left hand. My left hand here is keeping this horse on a line. Normally when I start these clinics, I'll put a horse in lines. I'll put an indirect draw for my inside rein and a line that goes from the bit to the shoulder, to the hip, and back to me for my outside rein. So that outside rein, if we have a circle here on the ground, that outside rein keeps me on track. The inside rein keeps the bend in the horse, and I'm exaggerating, but your outside line is what keeps him from drifting out. If I leave that outside rein go, he just walks right through that shoulder. So I pick it back up, and he comes back on line again. Inside, outside, rain. <laughs> in, in the patterns, you'll see that we have 20 meter circles. And the way to start with the inside, outside, rain is to get on a 20 meter. And I'll tell you what I do for my clinics is I take those little line machines that you see that they make the lines at the baseball fields and fill it with flour and I draw a 20 meter circle on the ground. And then I draw four 10 meter circles inside that circle. So that when you have your horse walking first through that 20 meter circle correctly, tracking up behind, then you can go and start adding 10 meter circles. So here's where we start adding our second two aids, which is an inside leg and an outside leg. Here my inside leg, he's, I'm using as a post to bend this horse around. My outside leg is back slightly to keep his hips kicked in and keep him on a 10 meter circle at a nice cadence and pace. He's wondering where all the other horses are, but he's wondering here. Okay, then we've got another thing on that pattern called a yin-yang. A yin-yang is a change of rein. You'll see this on dressage tests. Well, I'm in the center of my 20 meter circle. I've made my first half of my right hand circle. Now I change rein. What that means is that you're changing direction. So now my inside rein becomes my left hand. My inside leg becomes my left leg. My outside rein is my right hand and right leg. So we do the yin yang, we change direction, stay on a nice bend, back to our 20 meter circle. Here I'm using my aids, he wants to drift out, so I'm going to pull back on my right hand, my outside rein a little bit, keep the bend in, keep an inside leg on him so that I'm pushing my inside leg to my outside rein. That keeps a nice bend on your horse, 
keeps them tracking up behind. So when I want to change rain or do a yin yang to change direction, I'm going to work right through the middle, come around, nice and smooth, two half 10 meter circles. I'm back on my 20 meter circle and back again. This is a great pattern. I use it to warm up horses. I use it also like the mechanics use at the <coughs> mechanic shop to diagnose where my horse is stiff, where my horse is going to push through, where he wants to be hard, soft, because those circles will tell you everything. Now, I want to tell you that if you can't do too many circles, if you're going to do any kind of dressage, Western or classic, circles are the basis of everything. And after you start doing the other maneuvers and you find your horse is maybe not working through correctly, you'll find yourself coming back to these circles to fix those things. Because wherever that horse is cheating you on a maneuver, he's going to be cheating you on that circle. So if he's drifting out here, going this way, that means that you're not using enough outside rein and outside leg, and you put back on those lines, and he's going to straighten right up again. Okay, now the next thing we teach is we want to get control of the horse's back end. <laughs> and I'm jumping a little bit here. We're going to jump past the gates today, and we'll touch a little bit at the end of that if we can. But so we're going to start moving because we want to do some lateral work. So the first thing we have to do is we have to control these hips, okay? We've learned our inside-outside rein. We've learned what it does as far as picking our horse and making a maneuver. So now we're going to do a turn on the forehand. There's lots of ways to teach this. Craig Cameron teaches it, whoa, where he takes the head, pulls it up in his lap, kicks the leg back, and just moves the back end around. It works, it works on colts and babies, and it gets them thinking about their back end. Craig Cameron's a very basic instructor, and the stuff that he says is pretty down to earth. What I like to do is I like to keep the forwardness in a horse. So I'm going to start on this 10 meter circle. Get him going along nicely with a nice bend in him. Then I'm going to spiral in. I'm going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Then I'm going to pick up my outside rein, stop the front feet, and move the back end around. So we'll do that again. Go the other way. And I'll stop through it as we go. We've got our circle. We're going to bend it in, spiral in, smaller and smaller, until we feel that our horse has got a nice bend on him. His haunches are in. I'm going to pick up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to pick up my outside rein, outside of the circle, right hand. Kick my inside leg back. and move his hips around. Your outside rein stops their front feet, stops the forward motion. Your inside leg, hence, kicks the hips past. And if he starts to cheat you like he did there a little bit, you just pick up that outside rein a little more. Now here you're gonna have to kind of get some feel involved because if you do it mechanically, you're gonna tweak this horse and he's going to think that you're closing all the doors. So it's a little bit of feel to keep that forwardness going on him. Whoop. And to keep him moving because you don't want to stop the forward motion. So here again, I'm going to pick up my outside rein, my left hand, put my right leg back, Come on. move his hips around his front legs. Once you've got control of that and you can get your horse to do a turn on the forehand, then you're going to start doing, and the best way to do this is with a wall. We don't have one here, so we'll have an imaginary line. But the next thing you want to do is learn a haunches in. <clears throat> a haunches in, if we had a line down here, to start, we're going to do a diagonal. So you walk right into the wall, the wall is at his nose, put your right leg back, pick up your outside rein, tip his nose to the wall, and ask him to move down that wall and kick his hips in. 
When you start your haunches in, you're going to work on four tracks. If you draw four lines in the ground, that means that every foot is going to have a separate track. The haunches in is a four track. It's actually three and a half, because one of the tracks is a deep hole. But it's still four lines in the dirt for an actual haunches in. That'll change when you start with the shoulder in. But again, we're going to start with a leg heel on a diagonal. If this wall is right along here and I'm moving him down the wall, I want to see him picking up his back, right rear leg, stepping underneath. And I'm going to cue, 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 cue. You can do that and do that until that horse learns. You've done the haunches in. He knows to kick his hips over to you. Now you're going to start moving him in a straight line down a wall. You're starting to get your, your diagonal work done with them and your leg yield and you're, and you're controlling those hips. From there, what you really want to do, if the wall is on my right, right here, a real haunches in is going to be with the shoulder and the head straight and his hips off track. Can everybody see that? So that you get him going and he starts learning to put those feet where they're supposed to. Good boy. And again, it's the same maneuvers. You have your outside brain, your inside leg, your inside hand, you're putting a little bend in them, your body's sitting back, your outside leg is kicking those hips over for you like that. <laughs> so that you've got this horse bent. Start with the diagonal work. Start with leg heels on the diagonal down a wall. I'll try and use this rail. In the beginning, tip his nose to the wall or her. Kick the hips off slightly until they start to step under. You can see that left rear leg stepping underneath. Once you get them giving you those hips, then you can actually come in and ask this horse to bend in the ribs. Now, I want to keep his head and his shoulders parallel to this rail. So what I'm going to do here is that we're going to go straight. And I'm going to kick the hips off with my right leg. And we've got four tracks in the dirt. And his hips are turned in. That's an actual haunches in. Okay, now you're working. You've got this horse going around. He's doing circles for you. You've done it at a walk. You've done it at a trot or a jog, western jog, well, working jog. Now the next thing that you need to do is get to control his shoulders. Okay, so here's where we start to do a turn on the haunches. This is really not a spin that the quarter horse people do because they pivot on one leg. But you turn on the haunches, I start the same way. I get the forwardness, keep it moving. 10 meter circles, because the horse is used to this. We've done that for two months now. Spiral in again. Now I'm going to take and ask this horse to stop with my outside rein, bring his front end around his back end. until he does a turn on the haunches. <clears throat> the turn on the haunches, again, 
Now we're starting to ask him to control that front end. When you start to do this, you, you keep your horse as straight as you can. If they tip counter flexed a little bit to get started, that's okay. Whoa. Just ask him. If he gives you, whoa. If he gives you two steps, the first time it stops, pet him, scratch him. Tell him how good he did. Walk him out of it, come back and try it again. If you pet him and scratch him for two steps or one step, the next time you ask him, he's going to give you three. And then he's going to give you four. And then he's going to go all the way around. As you get better at this and you learn to control this horse, now you're going to want to add a few things to it. So now we want to kick those hips in behind and make him turn around his hips with his haunches in. So now we've got the beginnings of a half pass. We've got the haunches in, we've got the shoulder in. We've got him looking around our turn, haunches in, shoulder in, we're turning. <coughs> we're turning on the haunches. We've got the first steps of controlling that shoulder. You want to do it a step at a time, an inch at a time. You want to reward your horse every single time for every step. Something to keep in mind is don't ask your horse to do a ton of steps because you want to do more wrong. If he gives you two correctly, stop, pet him, walk him out of it. If he gives you three and four correctly, stop, pet him, walk out of it. Because every time you reinforce that little item of doing it correctly, for those two or three items, or two or three steps, he's going to give you three or four more. Um, and it doesn't matter what breed you do, they're all the same. They love to be complimented. And all these horses live for is to do it right. So if you can make it, training is just making your ideas presentable to this horse so he understands it. Doesn't matter how you do it, as long as he understands what you're asking him to do. The next thing that we're going to do here <coughs> is we want to now control the shoulders on the rail. So again, we've got our imaginary wall that runs away from you to the back wall. And we're going to take this horse. If the wall is on my left side here, we're going to do a leg yield on a diagonal and ask him to step down this wall with his shoulders off. Now, in the beginning, remember, a shoulder in is now a three track. So if the wall is on my right, whoa, right here, I've got three tracks in the dirt. His front left foot is going to be on the inside track. His front right foot is going to be on the middle track. His rear left foot is going to be on the middle track. And his rear right foot will be on the outside track. So we're going to move him down here. On a diagonal, the wall is behind me, shoulder in. I'm asking for too much, I'm exaggerating here a little bit so you can see because we don't have a real wall, obviously. And move them down. Once you get this horse moving easily off your legs, giving you the shoulder, now you can do an actual shoulder in. So what we do with a shoulder in for the real one is we're back on a three track. at you. Wall on my left. So now I'm going to bend this guy and I'm going to ask him to keep his hips straight in line and bring his shoulder off. We bring it off one stride, one level, one track. That's all we ask for. That's all you ask for in any shoulder end. It's a three track as opposed to a four track. So you've got the inside leg on the inside track, the two diagonals on the middle track, and the rear hind on the outside track. This all leads up to the ultimate, <coughs> is what we ask for on these horses, so that we can control both ends of them. And that is a half pass. We've done our diagonal up and down the wall. Now we've got to come back and work a diagonal on a straight line. 
So if I'm going away from you on a straight line, in the beginning, we're going to ask him to do a leg yoke on a diagonal. We've got the other two items in this puzzle, so we're going to ask him to do this on a diagonal. He's got to go sideways just as much as he goes forward. Okay, we do it at a walk. You get both directions. stepping under, do it at the walk until he's got the coordination, he knows where to put his legs. When you can get it at a walk, you want to do it at a trot.
and level two tests. That's going to add all the things that I've been showing you tonight into these tests. You're going to have length of gaze, lengthened at the low, lengthened at the working job. So your gaze will be lengthened. You're going to have collected gaze. Those will start to come in. We have a collected lobe and a collected jog. Um, the tests that you have in there are samples. They're going to be very, very similar to what we come out with the first of the year. They will all be offered everywhere that we have Western Dressage next year. So that means that this that here will have more tests here. We're also going to put in uh, the rules and the specifications for the freestyle, for a beginning freestyle, for your basic freestyle, and also for your level one and level two freestyle. So we'll have that next year. If there's any luck by mid-year, we'll start putting out some, some level two and level four tests, or three and four tests, um, and try and get those going so everybody stays happy with this and we can keep up with the riders that we have. Right now we have riders that are better than what the tests are that we have. And so we're trying to catch up to the riders and make it all work. We don't have to have these tests okayed by certain groups like we did last time. We have our own group this time. Because they've had experience judging these tests. 
We are working on judging programs now through some other groups that we're going to try and get Western type judges or regular judges into this so that we can cross over. But in the beginning, we'll be using dressage judges. The dressage judges that, that are jumping on this are the ones that all have Western backgrounds, and they love it. And so they're, they're in a big hurry to get this going because they like to see this. Um, it's toned down from what they're doing. It's a step up from the Western show for any breed. So it's kind of in between. It's natural to the horses, and they like it. So we haven't had any trouble that way. <clears throat> We're getting more and more actual dressage judges to do this. Um, I talked to, I was up in Canada judging a show, and I worked with an international dressage judge from Canada. They're on, this, on board with us, and they want to do the same thing. So that's the answer on the judging. Do we have any? Yes. What was the background on this horse before you started him, and how long did it take you to get him here? You know, this is my horse, and he turned six, and I took forever to get him doing anything. I mean, we, it's like the cobbler's kids, you know, they never have shoes. Well, my horses are all on broke, so. Um, I started this horse just under saddle two years ago, rode him in the mountains. I think I took him to one show only because um, I was there. Showed him in a class or two, that's about it. And I started doing this with him. He's been doing this for, oh, about a year, but it's real hit and miss. This horse is bred by Mary Wolverton, if you know Mary Wolverton. He's by Aquarian Supremacy out of an old Saddleback Bad Don Bear. Yes? Um, could you maybe explain the difference between Western dressage and cowboy dressage? Because I think maybe we're thinking that they're the same thing. You know, the basic stuff is going to be the same. The basic is going to all be the same. Cowboy dressage is a um, patented name that's owned by eight. Okay, that's his, that's his business. And what he does is a for profit for himself. And so what, everything that he's doing is exactly to build him and sell his, his um, tapes, his arenas, now he has arenas, and, and that's what it is. If you, you want to do the cowboy dressage patterns, it's going to help you with these patterns. It's all going to be the same. You're, you're doing your basic same pattern. And he's using dressage judges also. I think he had one show so far. But there is no, you don't have to join cavalry dressage. No. Oh, to, to get to do his stuff? Well, I don't know what his rules are. Um, he, he has, I think he has one page of rules. But to be, to be the Western dressage, you, you need to be a member of the Western dressage association? No. 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 You have to be a member of the USDF. Yeah. Well, the USDF. It, that depends on the show you go. At a USEF licensed competition, you either have to be a member of the United States Equestrian Federation or pay a non member fee. And those rules have nothing to do with Western dressage or the price of tea in China. Those are rules that the United States Equestrian Federation makes. If you show at a show that's not United States Equestrian Federation approved, you don't have to belong to WDAA uh, because we don't have those kind of requirements. You wouldn't have any other fees that you have to pay. You know, you would, well, you I'd know. love to take more money. <laughs> but no, we don't, we don't have fees for doing this. And what's happening is we're, we started by ponying off of dressage shows. They liked it because that doubled the number of their show. So we went to a show, they'd have half a day of regular dressage, and they had people wanting to do Western dressage, so they got the test, they brought them in, and they, they did it that way. A lot of these shows are splitting the deal so that they can shut their US EF part of it off and continue their regular show under the same insurance policy as long as it's not a US EF. Okay, or the horse in general between regular dressage 
and Western dressage. As you can see, when I went around here, I'm having this horse go with his head down. I'm not forcing him forward. I'm going at his natural trot or natural jog. And I, I want a little impulsion. So this is definitely not a Western pleasure class jog because I've got to have some impulsion to do these maneuvers when he's going to step underneath. So the difference in these horses is the softness, the way they, they carry themselves, their, uh, their body carriage. Any, any basic discipline that teaches horses correctly are going to teach them with their head lower in the beginning and pick it up as they balance and can bring their back end under them and, as they progress. So in the beginning, we advocate softness, a little bit lower head carriage. As we progress along through some of these maneuvers, we'll ask to have that head picked up when we do more collected gates. Did you do some low work? You want to see him low? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions before I move? Yes. My square hall. Okay. I. So you want me to come in the gate and call the deck? <clears throat> no, we're not going out. Sorry. <laughs> he didn't get his dinner yet, so. So I'm going to let him flow through. It's a little faster than a Western Pleasure Jock. Not as pushy as the other. Boom. And I haven't done square halts with him, to be honest with you. Okay, as far as the load goes, no, I want this load to be smooth enough so that he's forward, but I don't, I want to be able to do a maneuver off of it if I have to. I want to be able to slow them up, collect them, let them go on. If I need to lengthen it, and then bring it back to a working low. trying to pick judges that are horsemen, okay? 
The reason that this is popular is because we're using the natural gates of all the breeds. Dressage has gotten to the point, classic dressage, that their epitome of the horse is a bit more blood and the way they move forward. We're judging these horses on their, on their own type, their own body types. I don't want to say breed type because there's so many types within every breed. But we are going to start, we are trying to make these judges understand that they need to pick a quarter horse that's moving forward nicely, that's not dragging his toes, it's not dragging his legs, but he steps up from behind, has a little, comes off the ground, steps in the footprint in front of him or a little before, and there's lots of good quarter horses that do that. And so we're going to, and the same with the Frisian, the same with the Andalusians, the same with um, uh, Arabs that you get in here. Um, Fjords, we've, gosh, we've had about everything that's come through on those clinics so far. Draft horses, I've got people riding draft horses in these Western Dressage clinics. So they can all do it. And we're adhering to the natural gates of each type, body type of horse. Did that answer, Karen? Yes. Yes. The gates are defined uh, right now in our rules, but we're working, as Guy knows, on uh, a video that we have, we've uh, developed. Um, their guy is putting it together with showhorse.com, and they've got it narrated so that we've got different types, good and bad gates, and we're showing the different gates that we are trying to epitomize for Western Dressage. And when will that be out, Guy? In November. November. Trying to work it for the national meeting? Okay, for the national meeting. At that point, that's going to become a training aid for judges, for the exhibitors, um, and the trainers. Yes? Yes. You know what? We're going to have those available on the website. Um, those skill sets I developed as training aids for my clinics, and we, we just we put this packet together. Ellen did 100 packets here um, in a few days, and so I didn't get the other two skill sets in it, but, the, but we're going to have them on the website so that you can get them off of there. Then as it starts to fall in, you put an inside leg on to hold them against your outside ring. 
So those are what the patterns are for. Those are for your practice. Um, I, I've been doing those patterns forever and ever. And it was mostly in the old days because I was trying to slow Western horses down to a slow job. And the best way to do that is circles and bending back and forth and back and forth until they give you their ribs. So that's what the patterns are in that packet. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much.